big changes may be coming to Canadian cities with increasing video and now audio surveillance. In response to tragic gun homicides, in July 2018, Toronto City Council earmarked millions to double video surveillance and install a new US-based audio technology. One Silicon Valley company, ShotSpotter, developed a new technology for detecting and locating gunshots. The ShotSpotter system sends location data to police. They say they can do it in under a minute. And they say this notification system can make a significant dent in a city's gun violence. But it's not that simple. The question that the Canadian Civil Liberties Association wants to ask in this video is, what sort of privacy and civil liberties concerns does ShotSpotter bring up? And is this technology consistent with our ideals and values? Are we giving up too much privacy by increasing video and introducing audio surveillance onto Canadian streets? The idea itself is actually pretty old. The techniques that companies like ShotSpotter utilize have roots all the way back to primitive gunshot detectors employed in the First World War over a hundred years ago. Today, they use a wide array of microphones across an area. When they detect a loud bang, like that of a gun, using audio analysis, infrared cameras, and more than a little bit of trigonometry, it can pinpoint the location of the sound. The microphones need to be placed high up to have clear lines to locate the shots. Understandably, this poses quite a challenge in areas with lots of tall buildings, such as Toronto. That's not all. The sound of the supposed gunshot is first sent to a forensic audiologist for verification, and then to an app the police install on their phones. Literally, it's, it's a push notification. Dozens of cities across the United States have tried ShotSpotter technology with mixed results. Some still use it and publicly support it. Others have tried it, then quit either because of the cost or actual impact. Nonetheless, ShotSpotter lobbies cities to include funds for the technology in their budgets. And that's not cheap. ShotSpotter, the company, has a clear privacy policy. It does not retain the feed from the microphones unless shots are confirmed. And the company claims it intentionally places them in high locations to get better sound from gunshots and reduce the chances of accidentally recording a conversation. So then, why is ShotSpotter and technologies like it so controversial? First, we should look into the effectiveness of this technology. While some cities like New York have sung its praises and ShotSpotter claims a high accuracy rate, the effectiveness of it has been called into question by independent reporting. A Forbes investigation in six cities in 2016 has found that about 30 to 70% of ShotSpotter's reports are false alarms, and the police often investigate each case. This undoubtedly leads to an increase in wasted resources. Then there is another question. The statistics ShotSpotter cites to support their claim that a lot of gunshots go unreported has been collected from American cities. Is that problem faced by Toronto? And is there data to back that up? We'd like to verify ShotSpotter's accuracy and effectiveness, but this is difficult to do as ShotSpotter is opaque with its own data. They privately own all the data collected and even advise their customer cities to avoid or limit responding to access requests when people ask questions about the system and its use. Maintaining ownership of source code and data isn't unusual for a tech company, but it does make it difficult for the public to assess the technology. But put aside how it works for a moment. The critical question is whether or not this kind of surveillance tool is necessary at all whether its use is in keeping with our values, and whether it will contribute or detract from the types of cities we want to live in. This omnipresent surveillance system opens the door to all sorts of civil liberties concerns. Most importantly, not everyone is equally surveilled. These systems are typically set up in communities who have experienced years of over-policing and discrimination on the basis of race, socioeconomic class, or both. What kind of discriminatory effects will people suffer as a new form of surveillance is embedded in such neighborhoods? There are also a range of concerns about the data the system collects and the practices around it. How can this data be used in Canadian courts? And how can it be used more generally? After all, we know the company retains ownership over the data collected from our streets and reserves the right to sell it to agencies like the FBI or to government bodies. And of course, there is a real concern with the social implications of increased surveillance in our cities, which makes the installation of microphones in public areas seem like a normal thing. Is this just the beginning? What happens in the long term as better and better microphones become available for this purpose? What could they hear or overhear? What could this technology do when paired with security cameras and facial recognition technology? By installing these surveillance technologies, we are setting a precedent 
When we make decisions like this, we have to think about the long-term implications of widespread audio surveillance and ask ourselves, is it worth it? What do you think about video surveillance and gunshot detection technologies like ShotSpotter? Let us know what you think down in the comments down below. If you like this video and want to help the cause of civil liberties in Canada, check out our website, ccla.org, and become a member today. And be sure to subscribe to CCLA YouTube channel for more explainers and to stay updated on civil liberties issues in Canada. Rights, freedom, and justice are ongoing struggles. The state may be watching us, but with your help, CCLA is watching them.